<laughs> hey everybody, I'm Happy Mass Gamer, and welcome to my list for the top 5 tree cars in video games. Wait, I can't do that video yet. That video is way too great, and I'm far too dumb to do anything that amazing. Come to think of it, I've been feeling really stupid lately. Wait, I know just the game that helped me snap out of this. Call the Clue Finders! Right off the bat, you can feel that 90s PC game nostalgia. There's just something about old PC games that get me. There's this guy with a sexy British voice and all of a sudden he's kidnapped by the dragon from Microsoft Paint. This game just got mildly interesting. Call the Clue Finders! This isn't a job for kids? Do you have any idea how irresponsible you're being? You then get to pick the difficulty level for the game. I of course pick challenge because Happy Mass Gamers MLG Pro! The next scene is a bunch of kids flying with this guy. Come to think of it... DIVERSITY! Mr. Lindman, are we near the place where my Uncle Horace was kidnapped? Oh my god, where are you taking us? Well... Uh, peanuts, anyone? No, I don't want peanuts! The pilot tells you of a civilization that was destroyed by the Windows paint dragon, Mathra. Mathra. Terrific. The people of the city captured Mathra, locked him away, and left the city like idiots. Then locked the place up, split the key in half, now you gotta go find him. It's an awesome story. You play as, a uh, Lesbian Tron? Lue? Jorms... And, um, this guy. And of course, everyone's favorite yellow robot sidekick that has an annoying voice, Lap Trap. Wait, this game came out in 1998, and Borderlands came out in 2009. I'm watching you, Gearbox. You have to pick between the Monkey Kingdom and Goo Lagoon, which I assume are the two levels of the game to get the two halves of the key. The game turns out to be a point-and-click adventure game with levels designed so you got to do maths to progress. There are 10 stops in both the levels. In Goo Lagoon, you come across... Look, lads. Two big bugs. And a little bug. The Beatles? You know what you'll need to get to the top of the falls, don't you? Be Beatles. Beatles! Yeah, bags of goo Beatles. Oh, you need beetle bags to progress at the end of the level. Each stage has a different style of math problem, the first of which is just matching shapes and shades. Okay, greeny spiders, I'll help you, and oh my god, you're eating them. Sorry, bugs. You'll meet characters for more in-depth story of what Mathra is doing to Goo Lagoon to feel your math anger. You have to cross a bridge, help a mute yellow yeti eat bugs off his back, the tree from Kirby eat a leaf bug, young Groot, and it even comes with a little musical number. Here and live a puddle, we're all in quite a muddle, cause since the monsters come back, he's ruining the goo. It used to be we flourished, the goo here kept us nourished, now our lovely home's impurish, and we miss fresh goo. Well that was something. What do you have to say? Goo, goo. Oh, God, no! Once you collect a beetle bag of every color, you can head to the last part of the level where you use beetles with colors and patterns on them to scale up and eat flowers to release this guy's arms to progress. I remember this being very challenging when I was a kid. Apparently, young HMG wasn't too good at planning ahead. Which makes sense to why I'm 20 years old and still here playing this stupid game! But really, it took me a while to complete the last part of this stage because unlike the previous ones, you actually have to use three bugs on the same path to get the last flower. Follow the clues they give you at the end of each level, press them in order, and... I got the key! The next part of the game is the Monkey Kingdom. It's basically the exact same thing, except this time around you'll be getting Sneezeberries. Sneezeberries. I remember liking this kingdom more as a kid for some reason. Probably because the flower sneeze friggin' berries. When you get to the Monkey Kingdom, you find engine oil that was said to be dropped from Mathra. So clearly Mathra isn't a dragon and all these monkeys and plants are stupid. Which actually makes a lot of sense considering I'm helping them all with basic math problems. Basic math is hard. After collecting all the different colored sneezeberries by helping all the mankeys, go ahead and help yourself to another musical number. Long ago there lived a monster who rose up from the deep. I remember really liking the ending of this level and it had a lot of challenge for me as a kid. Basically there are a hundred tiles that you play Battleship on by solving math problems with either addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. The twist here being that you don't know which one to use, so you have to go through all of them to find the answer. Throw the berries on the tile of the answer and you unlock a letter to get the clues. As easy as it sounds, it's even easier than that. Like Battleship, once you hit one, you can hit the others without even doing the math problems. The stages get harder as the table increases by 100 each time and you start with less letters on the board. Since you get 10 berries and 10 chances, you'll probably end up having to go back and get more. 
Once you get past all those, press the body parts in the right order to get the second key! Whoa! Right, who turned out the lights? Trapdoor! Wee! Wee! Voice acting. Oh, great, this guy again. Well, from looking at your uncle's map, it seems quite a long way away. Why don't I drop you two off in my aeroplane? Wait, why are you letting kids skydive out of a plane to a jungle? This guy. I really don't like this guy. The clue finders get lost in the jungle, so you have to help others to find your way to the Lost Kingdom. Wait, geography? That's not even math! Get it out of my face! Also, it kind of says where the location is on the map, so you don't actually have to know where they are. Yay, learning! Huh? Fletcher Lindman! It was you all along! That's right, kids! The legend of Mathra was a convenient way to keep everyone away from the lost city while I collected animals for my fur company. Everything was going perfectly until your meddling uncle got in the way, but I took care of him. And you two kids won't stop me. <laughs> Wait, this guy was evil? I thought I was just making a clever joke about him being a creepy weirdo, but he's actually the most cunning and brilliant villain to have ever exist. Or maybe not. So now you have to stop him or something, I don't know, whatever. You come across the last two paths in the game, both containing three stages to get various colored snagnets. Although, really, none of these have anything to do with math. There are word problems, missing pieces problems, but no maths. I came here to do maths! With literally no variation of gameplay from the past two stages, you collect them and move on to the end of the game where you use said snagnets to advance. The stages are over bottomless pits with slates with words on them that have to be put in the correct place in order to A. Save the animals that Douchebag McGee stole and B. Create a trap for old Douchebag McGee. I don't really understand how building a sparkling bridge doubles as a trap, but... Alright. As the previous stages, the levels get harder and harder. All you have to do is place the adjacent words next to each other that fit with this guy's rules. There are words that sound alike, words that are synonyms and antonyms, verbs and adverbs. It's very simple and easy besides the fact that some if not most of the slates can go in multiple areas, making it so you have to reset a ton of times. Uncle Horus is across the very last stage, so once you finish it, you save him and finish the trap. Uh oh! And he's dead. Uncle Horus then gives Claptrap, I mean Lab Trap, to the kids for future super awesome mega hype adventures, and the game is over. We did it! I'm finally done with this game and I'm never gonna have to learn again. I'll get those kids yet. They haven't heard the last of Fletcher Q. Lindman. Wait, what? No! Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked this video, then you can check out my last video on the top 5 useless masks in Majora's Mask. Also, over on the item box channel, we have Minecraft Hardcore still going and Guess for Dead is just starting up, so go check them out. Thanks again for watching everyone, I'm Happy Mask Gamer and I'll see you next time.